Hey guys, Chris, Tabletop Sports Delaware, and uh, first video with the new moniker, and uh, seeing as it is July 1st, I thought it would be a good time to break out the old Gettysburg game. Don't worry, sports videos will happen, but I really wanted to go ahead and put this out here. So, we are going to be playing uh, Avalon Hills 125th edition, anniversary edition, printed in 1988, I've had this game since then, and I've played it quite a few times over the years. And um, every once in a while I get it out and I've got to reread the rules. Uh, for those of you who want to know the rules, they're readily available online. We're just going to play. So here we are. It is um, turn one. It is about 7 o'clock in the morning on the 1st of July. And the Union Army is shadowing uh, the Confederates on the other side of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And the Confederates are working their way towards Gettysburg. They have a shoe factory, and they really want footwear for their soldiers. They're looking to choose a place to demolish the Union Army uh, north of the Mason-Dixon line. So, let's go ahead and get going. We're going to... Ha! Huh. Since we're moving in, uh, we have Reynolds... General of First Corps and uh, Wadsworth, one of his uh, divisions. Two. Let's go ahead and move them on up to Cemetery Hill for now. And yes, we are going to. Uh, yeah, I know what's happening. That's the way I'm going to play it. But uh, let's go ahead and get. Ah, uh, let's get Buford. I'm thinking right along there, and let's bring Devon's cavalry up, and we might situate them right there along the unfinished railroad, just to the east of Willoughby Run. And a lot of action is going to be taking place over here, so let's go ahead and um, go to turn two. So it is now about nine o'clock in the morning, and. Coming in on the Chambersburg Pike, we have uh, Heath Division of 3rd Corps, AP Hills Corps, and Pegram's Artillery. Uh, they enter at S1, so they're going to enter here. So Heath. Now, do they want to play this smart? Their orders are not to engage. So we're thinking, bring them up to here for the moment. For the moment. Okay, let's do that. And that is all that the Confederates are going to do. And we have uh, troops entering for the Union. And they are entering all the way down here. Um, entering on the Emmitsburg Road, uh, one element of the 11th Corps, Barlow, and uh, three elements of the 1st, Robinson, Doubleday, and Wainwright's Artillery will be coming in on the Emmitsburg Road. Should have grabbed my tweezers. It's quite all right. And coming in on uh, the Tannytown Road to the south, we have uh, Howard, General of 11th Corps, with uh, two of his elements, Schur's Infantry and Osborne's Artillery. Uh, no word yet of combat, no sounds of combat. So we're, we're not thinking haste, but they are moving up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Nine. Let's get him. Yeah, let's get him to Cemetery Hill. Um, Howard's 11th. Let's put him in the front. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
And we will move elements of the first core. Newton, I believe. Um, who is first core? Ow, oh, Reynolds, who's already in the field. It's first. Ah, oh, okay, so 11th. So Howard's 11th. Well, okay, then we'll reverse that. Let's get Reynolds up and running in Barlow right there. So that's 10. Are they only get 5. Correct? It's been a while since I played. Sorry. Uh, movement. Yeah. Duh. Because they do not have an accompanying general. So they are. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry about that. Been a while, been a while. Does take a while for Reynolds to get his army up. Okay, and that being that, we will go to the 10 to noon, turn three. On the morning of July the 1st, 1863. And AP Hill's Corps is coming in full strength in the Chambersburg Pike right over here and he sees what's ahead of him wow and he's gonna blast into Devon right there they will move. Pegram is going to join as well. So we've got 9, 10, 11. So maximum of 10 on Devon. So that is, oh dear, Ness. 17 to 5. That is 2. Devon eliminated. Goodness, Devon's out just that quick. Wick. Um, that is the Confederate turn. We go to the Union. Now we have heard sounds of fight. J.N.O., Buford, and Gambles. They are going to withdraw. They, damn it, they don't want to give him the high ground. Uh, First core. One, two, three, four. So that's uh, almost half of their movement. Let's go with Howard with 11th Corps. Five, six, seven. Buford will withdraw to here. And Reynolds will be there. First Corps is coming up slowly. Not showing you everything. Robinson and Doubleday bring their divisions up the Emmitsburg Road. Wainwright's artillery in tow and Barlow's element of Howard's 11th bringing up the rear. And entering on this turn is um, one of Howard's divisions led by Steinware. And he is coming in down at the Tanny Town Road. And he will be advancing as well. So that is the third turn. We are now at lunchtime. Entering from the north on the Carlisle Road. First elements of Yule's Second Corps, led by Rhodes, General Rhodes. So AP Hill is going to lead across. And Rhodes is going to come down from the north. One, two, three, four, 
five six. Coming in to Buford from the back. Um, out of range of the artillery. The artillery is going to work their way up. Uh, Pegram will come up first. And we are going to attack. Hill is going to attack Howard's Corps. So Howard has three. Hill has nine. So that's going to be eight to thirteen. Howard suffers two losses and must retreat. Shurz is half strength. Osborne is half strength. They're going to retreat here. Away from Hill and his advance. And Hill is going to push the advance. Now, Rhodes is going to attack Buford, and Buford, with Gamble's cavalry division, has a 6-1 to one Rhodes has, Rhodes and Ewell. And it's going to stay that a differential of 5. Um, Gamble is going to lose 1 and be eliminated, and J.N.O. Buford is in trouble. He's going to fall back to Reynolds' position just northwest of Gettysburg on the Unfinished Railroad and the Chambersburg Pike. Alrighty, that is going to take us to the north has nobody coming in on the fourth turn. So, uh, thus far, this is the layout of the battle. Bring it down a little bit more so we can see that when it's all spread out. Okay. Alrighty, so we are going to go to the fifth turn on July the 1st. This is a very beginner game. I love this game. It's just, it's a very easy game to play. I love this game. And uh, all of a sudden, Robert E. Lee and old Gloomy Pete, James Longstreet, are showing up on the Chambersburg Pike along with elements of... A.P. Hill's 3rd Corps, led by General Anderson. And Jubal Early, part of Yule's 2nd Corps, is coming in down on the Harrisburg Road. And they are going to push the... They're going to push the advantage. Let me check one more thing... Okay. Oh. Nope. J&O Buford is mowed down. Sorry, I wanted to make sure of that. J&O Buford is mowed down. They were eliminated. They did not retreat. Very well. Okay. So we're focusing our attention here northwest of Gettysburg. Um, they're going to pick up McIntosh's artillery. No, Pegram's. One. Uh, leave Pegram's artillery there and stay with it. Longstreet and Lee. McIntosh's artillery is going to move into McPherson's Woods. Early, Jubal Early, is going to move in. Six, seven, eight, nine. He is able to... Oh, he gets five, sorry. Two, three, four. F slow to advance. So he comes in on the Harrisburg Road, a couple of hexes northeast of Gettysburg. And A.P. Hill is going to push his advance against the 11th Corps. I did not make movements for the Union in the last turn. Sorry, one, two, three, four, uh, five. Moving these guys up. Just because no one's coming in doesn't mean there's nothing that the Union can't do. And actually... They would probably fall back to here. But 
push him back, take double day. That would have happened very well. Early is there. Uh, they are going to push the advantage. Boom, boom. I'm changing stuff on the fly because I can do that. So they would have set up a little bit closer. Pegram would probably set up in McPherson's Woods with Lee and Longstreet, and Hill is going to push on the first along with Rhodes. So we have 9 15 against 5. That's going to be 19 against 11, plus 8. So first quarter is going to take two losses. Robinson drops to half strength. Wadsworth. Still a two. But they must withdraw, and they withdraw here. Okay. So it is starting to clear out a little bit, and Gettysburg is being overrun by the Confederate soldiers coming into combat. Hancock is going to be coming in down the Tannytown Road. Uh, Union, they are going to cede the town. They do not have a choice. Uh, one, two, three, four. Steinware will go there. Wainwright will go here. Howard will go here. Reynolds will go there. Hancock is advancing. Second Corps leader. And we go to turn six. And more come in. Uh, more elements of Yule's Second Corps. Johnson's Infantry, Nelson and Dance's Artillery coming in on the Chambersburg Pike to the northwest. And Jenkins Cavalry shows up on the Harrisburg Road coming in after early. Show everybody where we are here at the beginning of turn six. Uh, elements of the Second Corps Confederate are coming in here, and Jenkins is coming in on the Harrisburg Road. Confederate Cavalry. Uh, nobody is over here for the Union at this point. Everybody has uh, entered and moved up. They've advanced. So let's go back to the action here. It is time for... them to build their forces. Let's bring Early up to Rhodes. And Rhodes moves into town. Uh, let's continue to advance Anderson up here. Let's continue to bring the artillery up. Let's continue to bring the artillery up. They may be of some use. Johnson is one, two, three, four, four. Five, second Corps, Nelson, second Corps, Dance, second Corps, advancing on the Confederate position in the city of Gettysburg. And that's going to be it. Let's go to turn six. It's around five o'clock in the evening for the Union. Um, and coming in on the Baltimore Pike. Just getting ready to cross Rock Creek. Uh, elements of the 12th. Slocum. General Slocum with his generals in charge of divisions. Uh, Williams and Gary. And Muhlenberg's artillery. So more and more Union troops will begin to show up. Uh, 12th Corps will move there. 12th Corps' artillery 
We'll move there. One, two, three, four. That's as far as they can go. All right, so that is that. That's as far as they can go. Wow. Cool. All righty. We are sitting still for the Union uh, turn seven. It's about six or seven o'clock in the evening, about an hour before sunset. And Hill is going to spread out to the south. with his third core. Um, second core, Johnson is going to come up. Nelson is going to come up. I'm not worried about the victory stuff. I'm playing this turn until it's sensible for it to quit. I really am. I'm not worried about all that. Because it's been so long since I've done it, I would have had to read the rules for two hours before I started. So we are concentrating um, between Seminary Ridge, which is over here to the south of town, the tree line that goes in towards town, which is between Willoughby Run and the Emmitsburg Road, and Cemetery Hill, which is the uh, formation of the Union strength in the area, and Yule's Second Corps and Jenkins Cavalry Unit is in Gettysburg, I think that's it for the seventh turn. I like what they've got uh, for the uh, Union. Um, elements of the third, General Sickles and uh, one of his divisions under General Bernie coming in on the Emmitsburg Road and they have 10 movement into the area right there. So we go to the night turn. Um, enter more elements of Longstreet's 1st Corps and Hood and McClaw's divisions. They're going to come in up there on the Chambersburg Pike, right there. And they will, they'll move in so far. They'll move in so far. Um, and then we have a lot of Union troops moving in overnight. Uh, coming in on the Baltimore Pike. Elements of Sykes 5th. Including infantry under Generals Barnes and Ayers and Martin's infantry uh, artillery. So we're going to stack them up here. No attempt to at Culp's Hill. Um, and we are going to bivouac Reynolds. Strengthen him back up tomorrow. Uh, no, because that's a 24 hour thing. So we're not going to do that. We are going to bivouac Osborne. Hopefully he won't have to move. Uh, coming in from the south on the Emmitsburg Road. Uh, more elements of Sickles Third, Humphreys Infantry and Randolph's uh, Artillery. And Sickles will take a position there. And then coming up the Tannytown Road. Um, General Meade and he is leading elements of the second and the artillery deserve he's with uh, Caldwell and Gibbons um, divisions of Hancock's second corps Five, six seven eight nine he'll drop him off with Hancock
and he'll move forward and be with Osborne's bivouacked artillery division. And also coming up the Tannytown Road, um, Hayes Division, with Hazard's artillery in tow, elements of the second, and artillery deserve, reserve Ransom and Fitzhugh. And can we block out sunlight a little better? Yep, right there. Perfect. That's what I want right there. Okay, so that is how things are at the end of July 1st, 1863. Um, we are going to go ahead and cut the video, and we are going to have one video on each day for each day of the battle. So guys, again, this is uh, Tabletop Sports Delaware. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful 4th of July. Um, remember, just remember, remember. Thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful evening.